Bodybuilding is the sport or art of crafting the sculpture that is the human body. On this channel, we'll often look at characters from our favorite anime, comics, and video games in light of this art form. Bodybuilding has been around for over 100 years with modern day bodybuilding being founded by the GOAT Eugene Sandow during the turn of the 20th century. If you don't know about Eugene, you're missing out. The Sandow is literally the trophy that the Mr. Olympia wins every year and it was named after him. Make sure to look him up and be prepared to be impressed with what he was able to accomplish 100 plus years ago. So in bodybuilding, the contestants are ranked based on four primary criteria. If you're anything like how I was, bodybuilding can be a little confusing to you. There's all these big muscular guys on stage and they all look pretty similar. How can you even choose a winner when they're all so massive? Hopefully this video will help you understand more of the sport of bodybuilding. So let's start with how the contestants are actually scored. This comes from four basic primary criteria. First up is muscle mass. This one is fairly explanatory. We basically ask, does this person have a good amount of muscle? And if so, they receive a good rating. But you can't just have muscle mass alone. If that were the case, the the biggest contestant would always win. Imagine if winners of art competitions only won for having the biggest painting or sculpture. Kind of silly, right? This leads us into our second criterion for bodybuilding, which is symmetry. With symmetry, we are essentially looking for competitors to have an equal amount of muscle on both sides of their body. On this channel, when we analyze the physiques of different characters, this typically results in a perfect score just because that's how they're drawn. Yet in real life bodybuilding, the results are not so black and white. Oftentimes, you'll see a lot of muscular imbalances. Most notably, when competitors do a front double bicep, you can almost always see a slight difference, if not a major one. And to go along with symmetry, another similar criterion for bodybuilding is actually proportions. This is where we see a lot of people and characters struggle with their scoring. A lot of people ask me in the comments why someone like Master Roshi or Escanor doesn't get mentioned among the best of the best, and that's simply because their proportions are just really off. With characters like these, their upper body really outshines their lower body. And in Roshi's case specifically, we see that his traps and shoulders are just too big for his arms and chest. Another important quality with proportions that we nearly lost in bodybuilding in the 2000s and 2010s or however you say that but thankfully is back on the scene now is the V taper this is essentially the upside down triangle shape created between the shoulders lats and waist bodybuilders with broad shoulders wide lats and a slim and narrow waist typically have more of a classic bodybuilding physique and one that most people find more aesthetically pleasing so you see bodybuilding isn't just about size but rather proportions and the flow of the physique as well finally the last judging criterion is certainly one of the most crucial and that is conditioning conditioning essentially refers to a bodybuilder's leanness or how shredded they are. For many real life bodybuilders, this can be their downfall. In fact, your Mr. Olympia Big Rami struggled with this for many years before he actually won, and he's one of the biggest to ever do it. You can always tell if a bodybuilder has good conditioning if their muscles are well separated, have distinct striations, are vascular, and have feathering. So given these criteria, bodybuilders can achieve these incredible physiques through years of proper training, nutrition, and supplements. Sometimes natty and sometimes not, depending on the type of competition they're competing in. But all of this isn't enough if the competitor doesn't understand how to show off their physique. Which brings us to the day of the competition, aka the stage. When a bodybuilder is on stage, the judges will have them perform eight compulsory poses and four quarter turns. On top of this, they'll create their own posing routine as well, which is done alone on stage. The art of posing is how a competitor can show off their greatest qualities and even hide their weaknesses, eh, assuming they have any. It's perfect already. Oh yeah, it's down to a point. Wait when you see it. <laughs> All these different poses are for another video, but they essentially show off the bodybuilder's physique from many different angles with various muscle groups being showcased at a time. From these angles, the judges are able to use our four criteria of muscle mass, symmetry, proportions, and conditioning to determine the scoring of each competitor. For our specific videos in which we review characters, we don't have the pleasure of seeing them on the stage with these poses. So many times we'll just give our best guess based on the shots of their physique that we do have, which can tend to be a bit subjective. But bodybuilding itself is a bit subjective at times anyway. Anyway, that's why nearly every year you hear critique about why a person plays so low or so high. Like I said, it's an art form, and as we all know, that means it's subjective by nature. Having said this, I hope with the knowledge you now have on the specific criteria, you can understand just a little better how the sport of bodybuilding is actually performed. Of course, there's so much more to the sport, but for now, these basics should tide you over. If you'd like to know more about the specific poses that competitors go through, then make sure to check out this video where I break down each one. Also, feel free to like this video and comment as I would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.